With power outages becoming more and more frequent, you may be thinking about buying a generator. But with all the choices out there, it's hard to tell how many watt generator that you need. Today, I'm going to help you figure out exactly how many watts you need. Because you might be thinking you need a big old Detroit diesel like this. But what you really need is this Genrac. Or maybe you think you need this. But what you really need is this. Right now we're going to answer every question you may have about portable generators. So stick around and let's get going. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. If you would like to get an awesome shirt like this, I've put a link down in the description of this video to my spread shop store. You can get shirts, coffee cups, you can get camper mugs, you can get hats, all kinds of cool stuff. When it comes to determining how many watts your portable generator needs to be, the first thing you need to do is compile a list of the necessities, the absolute things that you need to run so that you can gather the wattage information and the surge information off of those items and make sure that you purchase the generator that you need, kind of plain and simple. However, that can be more difficult than it sounds, and we're going to dig into that right now. When you're using a portable generator, it's all about power management. It's not per se that you can only use these things and that's it. You can use other things, but something has to give. So if you need to run the wash machine, for example, and do a load of laundry, power's been out for three or four days, clothes are piling up, you got to do some laundry. You can unplug your refrigerator for two hours and use the wash machine. You can unplug the freezer for two hours. You can use the dryer. You can manage the way you use your electricity to keep you from going over the wattage that your generator can put out yet still use everything in your home that you need to use, just manage it correctly. There's a tag on your appliances that gives you the wattage and the surge wattage. Sometimes, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's hard to find and sometimes it's hard to decipher if you do find it. And so the best thing that you can do is purchase this guy from Amazon right here. I've put a link in the description for it. It's a little over 20 bucks. And what it's going to do is you plug it in line with your appliance and it's going to tell you your wattage. Not only will it tell you your wattage, but it'll tell you your surge wattage. And we're going to get more into surge in a few minutes here so that you can understand that a little better. But it's important to understand the surge wattage. When you first plug in your refrigerator, your freezer, it's going to show you that boost in the watts that it needs and then it'll go down to the running watts. This only stays on there for a couple of seconds and then it disappears. So you need to keep your eyes on it and keep your eyes on it really good while you're determining what wattage you need. So for example, my wife and I have decided that we need the refrigerator, we need the freezer. If it's summertime, we need a couple of small 5000 BTU window air conditioning units. We need the internet, we need the TV, and we need some lights. And this is our list of necessary items. So real quick, I'm just going to break down the wattage of the necessary items for me to give you kind of an idea. My refrigerator uses 800 watts. My freezer uses 500 watts. My TV uses 45 watts. My internet uses 5 watts. Cell phone chargers use 25 watts each. 50, sometimes there might be 3 going, 75 watts. I run about 5 LED lights at a time. That's, that's a lot, actually, and I might not even have that on for a grand total of 45 watts. LED lights are really, really easy on wattage. A 60-watt LED equivalent only uses 9, 9.5 watts. So if you switched all your lights out to LED, it's actually going to help you big time in keeping the wattage of your generator down and helping to keep a little money in your pocket. My grand total wattage is 2,545 watts. My generator is 3,600 watts. So there's plenty of room there for me to spare. Once you've compiled your list of necessary items and you've figured out the exact wattage that those items are going to take, we need to move on to surge wattage. Surge wattage is when a appliance with a compressor or a large electric motor first turns on. It'll draw extra wattage to get that compressor going, to get that motor going. This is something that only occurs for about two or three seconds for each item. It happens really fast. When it comes to surge wattage, there's a lot of confusion. And a lot of people will tell you that you need a generator that can cover every bit of surge wattage that's gonna be created by your appliances. 
but really and truly you don't because the chances of each and every one of your appliances starting at the same time or requiring that surge wattage at the same time are insanely low. You cannot turn on every item in your home at the same time. So you would turn on the breaker for your refrigerator. A minute later, you turn on the breaker for your freezer. Those surge cycles are happening one at a time. The chances of a surge cycle happening together, two of them, your generator would probably cover it. You might be talking 2200 watts or something like that, hitting it at one time, plus the running watts of the others, you would be just fine. However, in the event that it did happen, that every appliance in your home started at the same time, it would pop the breaker on your generator if your generator did not have enough surge wattage to cover it. This has never occurred to me. I am running my generator's surge wattage is 600 watts lower than the surge requirements of every one of my appliances. None of my appliances have ever started at the same time and popped the breaker. Just doesn't happen. So when they tell you that you need to buy this higher wattage generator just so you can cover the surge, that part's not really true. And there is a slim chance that everything in your home could surge at the same time, could start at the same time and pop the breaker on your generator. I have never encountered that happen and I've been using a backup generator when power goes out and power's been out six times this summer so far due to these nasty storms in Michigan and I have never had this happen. So my best advice for you when selecting a generator is to figure out exactly how many watts you need. If you total up that you need 3,500 watts, I would add a thousand to that and I would go get a 4,000 watt generator. If you plan on running central air conditioning or an electric hot water heater, these two items gobble up the wattage and it's gonna be very difficult for you to even use a portable generator to do this. You can, but it will be very difficult because it doesn't matter whether it's a 3600 watt generator or an 8500 watt generator, the whole home plug on these generators is a 30 amp outlet. This is probably the biggest downside to using a portable generator versus a whole home system. The upside is a portable generator is way less expensive than a whole home system and a portable generator will run your whole home with proper power management. I can use this, 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 and this. If I want to use this, something else has to give. It's as simple as that. I got to turn this off, then I can use this. I'm done with that, now I can turn this back on. And you can power your whole house that way and you will wind up being very satisfied with what your portable generator can do. I've also put down in the description a link to an article that I found online that kind of gives you the layout and an approximate wattage value that appliances will use. And it breaks it down. There's a tons of appliances on there all the way from, you know, your deep freezer to your electric hot water heater to a toaster. In addition to the whole home plug on a portable generator, you also have typically four outlets. These four outlets are going to be 20 amps. So you can plug in four extension cords and you can run them in your house in lieu of running the whole home plug. There is obviously a 10 amp advantage to using the whole home plug and it will cost you a little under $500 to have an electrician come out and wire your panel and put in a breaker so that you can have your generator plug right into your house. You can have every light, you can have everything you want. And like I say, it just boils down to power management. And it's not hard to do, it's an inconvenience, but it's certainly not as big of an inconvenience as having no power at all. I hope this video has helped to clarify what you may need for wattage in a portable generator. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of these two videos, they're going to pop up right there. If you haven't subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it if you do. And always remember to respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.